I've, I'm going to try... And I'm, I know I'm not going to speak very long because I've tried to make the service as compact today as possible because I know that people have many, many, many things to do. But I want to start this morning's ser uh, sermon by reading from that most authoritative work uh, on the internet, Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia says this about Christmas. Christmas is an annual festival commemorating the birth of Jesus Christ, observed primarily on December 25th as a religious and cultural celebration among the billions of people around the world. And it goes on to state, the traditional Christmas narrative or story recounted in the New Testament, known as the Nativity of Jesus, says that Jesus was born in Bethlehem in accordance with messianic prophecies. And then when Joseph and Mary arrived in the city, the inn had no room, and so they were offered a stable where the Christ child was soon born with angels proclaiming this news to shepherds who then spread the word. That's what Wikipedia states. In actual fact, it's amazing that they got their theology quite right. And often they got their theology more right than some churches, which is a very scary thing. But it's cold and it's clinical and it is a statement of fact. I read an article by a fellow called Douglas O'Neilly. And he wrote this. I argue that Christmas has become a useless social fad. Go back one. Am I missing one? Okay. Listen then for this one. Douglas O'Neilly said, I argue that Christmas has become a useless social fad which should be allowed to die out because it has progressively degenerated into a period for indulging and celebrating the grossest attributes of the human species. Greed, avarice, licentious living, debauchery and spirituality spiritual self-abnegation. And if you think about it, in Australia it is, as this Douglas O'Neilly also stated, that the alleged spiritual significance of Christmas is fading away. The materialistic dimension is gaining ground. You don't have to go far to realise that. After church, head down to Woolworths or Kmart or Coles and see what is really happening. Talk to your friends that aren't believers. Talk to your friends that are believers. The reality is there doesn't seem to be much of Christmas or Christ Mass left except for the idea. I think it's a symptom of our modern world, our lack of belief, our lack of knowing that there is a God and, it is, and the dismissal of there being a God is so endemic in society. And it's not just now. Back in 1961, you, there are some of you that will remember. I won't. I was only three years. It took three more years for me to exist. Back in 1961, there was a, a Russian cosmonaut called Yuri Gagarin. He was the, the first person to be launched into space. And he orbited the Earth for 108 minutes before his return. And it, the Russian government claimed that while Yuri was in space, he said these famous words, I don't see any God up here. You can understand why the Soviet Union did that, because they were avowedly atheists. But I find it very, very interesting 
that that idea is still prevalent. I don't see any God up here. In reply to this, there was a, a British author of the time. His name was Clive Lewis. And he talks about this incident, this, I don't see any God up there. He said, looking for God or heaven by exploring spaces like reading or seeing all Shakespeare's plays in the hope you will find Shakespeare as one of the characters or the Stratford, which was where the plays were performed, as one of the places. Clive Lewis went on to say, Shakespeare is in one sense present at every moment in every play. But he is never present in the same way as Hamlet or Falstaff or Lady Macbeth. Nor is he diffused through the play like a gas. And C.S. Lewis went on to write, If there were an idiot who thought plays exist on their own without an author, our belief in Shakespeare would not be much affected by his saying quite truly that he had studied all the plays and never found Shakespeare in them. Pastor Tim Keller went on to say, the only way that Hamlet could know Shakespeare is if Shakespeare wrote himself into the play. See, we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus because it's actually a historical fact. Wikipedia knows this. We also celebrate the birth of Jesus because it's written in the book, in the Bible. And I know when I say that, when I say Wikipedia, people go, oh yeah. When I say the Bible, people go, oh. Makes people smile at you and they nod their heads. And they think us Christians are so simple. How could you believe that? But think about this. If we were to judge the Bible as we judge other ancient documents, the Bible is so much more reliable with so many more manuscripts it is so reliable that people use it to hunt for places to hunt for things it's historically accurate it's factually correct it has been faithfully preserved it is more reliable than any other ancient ancient manuscript on the face of the planet and because it's reliable and because it's truthful and because it's accurate, we can look from Genesis to Revelation and we know it to be true. We, we read in the book of John, John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. It says, in the beginning was the word. When you see word, think Jesus. Jesus. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. But it goes on in John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word... And Jesus became flesh. 
and he dealt among us. And John says, and we, the disciples, have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Look, we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Christmas because Christmas is God writing himself into the play. Christmas is God writing himself into the play. 